you very much. Just days after the months-long and contentious battle over the debt was resolved, Wall Street had a meltdown, and the week ended with a rather lukewarm report on unemployment. President Obama says he wants to extend unemployment insurance to help out of work Americans get back on their feet, and he's also talking about other ways to stimulate the economy. The question is, is it too little, too late to keep him and his party from losing favor with voters? Joining us now with more on that and a look at the rocky road that may be ahead, Scott Montgomery, editor-in-chief of Roll Call. Scott, good to have you with us this morning. Good morning. How rocky may this road be? Oh, I think it's going to be pretty rocky. I mean, we all know the president had a pretty lousy week uh, in addition to turning 50. And, uh, but if you look at the things that happened, whether it was the, um, the S&P downgrade or and the stock market fall, uh, the, the trick is that those things are individual things that I think voters probably don't blame the president particularly for. It's a year out from the election. The big thing is the state of the economy overall and um, unemployment. I mean, a year from now, if we're still in the nines in unemployment, that's a very tough sell for an incumbent president. And how tough does that make it for him now? Trying to solve the economy is one thing. Running a campaign is another. He's going to have to marry the two somehow. Yeah, he's going to. And, and let's remember, I mean, the, the trick with the jobs problem, and it's the same problem for Republicans as it is for the Democrats, which is the way to solve the jobs problem for a government is to spend money, right? Either the Democrats would like to, uh, they'd spend money on roads programs, they'd spend money on incentives for, you know, buying solar panels or electric cars. Republicans would do more of a cost cutting, uh, more of a, uh, a tax cutting across the board to create incentives for uh, people to have money, whether it's individuals or it's, or it's uh, companies. In either case, uh, that's money out of the federal treasury. Right now, you can't take money out of the federal treasury. That's a problem. Yeah, and the stimulus, which was tried, some say that that money is now there and gone, so right, right. we need a new approach now. Right. How tough is that going to be for the president as he tries to move forward now? Yeah, that's the big question for the president is, can he convince people that his approach so far actually kept things from getting worse and that if we continue on his approach, ultimately things will get better? Let me ask you about, on the flip side of this, are Republicans just kind of just, just taking this as a huge moment to grab and to seize onto, or, or is the pressure on them to say, this is a golden opportunity, you better take advantage of it. Yeah, well, the Republicans have to, uh, and we saw this, we're seeing this in the polls, they are half responsible for governing, right? They have the majority in the House, which means they have a lot of visibility, and therefore voters are looking to them as well as to the president to produce. And uh, we're going to see the, um, we've seen already the presidential candidates in the Republican Party are starting to hit on the president over this S&P thing. Um, but it's more complicated than simply this guy was the guy who was the president at the time that the S&P downgraded. It, it seems like it's a pretty safe bet that the economy is going to be front and center for the entire election process. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be the story. So who's the pressure on? Which side? Oh, the pressure is definitely on the president. As I said, I mean, I think that voters give the president a certain amount of leeway. They understand that it's not all him. But in the end, employment has been above 8% into 9% throughout his presidency. If that is still the case this time next year, He's going to have a tough thing to argue. Yeah. The voters need to see some kind of, of, of change at, at some point now in the next year or so. Yeah. I mean, they need to see some signs of difference. You know, I mean, if you recall back uh, when the first George Bush was running against Clinton, things had actually started to change in the economy, but voters hadn't felt it by the time the election came around. And the, uh, President Obama faces the same problem, that time is running out for him to not just make change, but make change that voters start to feel in time before they go to the polls. Right, and he had such a, a obviously like a whirlwind of base support leading up in 2008. Uh, now, what's the difference here? Because you, you look at Wall Street and everything goes into Wall Street and you have all, you know, all the formulas that go into it and everything that, but, but, you know, most of America is really not that concerned about that. What are they looking for when it comes to re-election time? Well, you know, it's interesting you say that about, uh, about support. I mean, that is the president's big issue um, in addition to sort of the unemployment problem. You know, we have, we have a, Carolco has a reporter in California right now who's been talking to voters who say, you know, these are some liberal voters who say, you know, we'd actually vote for uh, Ralph Nader. Now, clearly, they're not going to ultimately vote for Ralph Nader. He won't be on the ballot. But the president's lack of, enthusiasm, the lack of enthusiasm for the president in his base is a problem because these are the people who, in addition to donating some money, they're also the ones who knock on doors, who man the phone banks. That's an issue that the president is going to have to deal with. All right. Well, we're going to see what happens as we get closer and closer to the election. Scott, I appreciate your words this morning. Thank you very Scott much. Scott Montgomery with Roll Call Editor-in-Chief. Thanks, Tony. All right, Steve. Scott, thank you very much.